There are some watches you come across and just instantly fall in love with the look of. And yes, I get it. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder and all that, blah, blah, blah. But this watch, I just had to check it out. Look, I'll admit that I'm shallow. There's lots of good eating fish out there. You don't have to be snacking down on carp anymore. But I'm not that shallow. <laughs> it's not just about having beauty on the outside. What is inside matters too. So when I found out that one of my watch club buddies here in town, Jeff, ordered this watch, I just had to ask to get my hands on it. And I've linked his Instagram page down in the description, so go give him a follow. His collection is full of some really cool and eclectic pieces that I know you'll love seeing, just like this Perrin Rogue watch. So let's get into it. There are some videos out there that already give a breakdown on the history of this brand and I'll link their website down in the description for you, but let me just give you the cliff notes summary. It's a Romanian company with small batch limited edition watches that are hand assembled in Switzerland using Swiss movements and have some really unique design elements in their watch lineup, this one being their diver's watch. The brand name is derived from the word perennial, which I think is pretty cool. What's up Schwartzforce, welcome back to the channel. In case if you're new here, my name's Dave and may the Schwartz be with you. I review all types of watches from inexpensive homage pieces to watches like what I'm rocking on the wrist today, my Tudor Pelagos or Pelagos. Consider subscribing if you like watches and wanna see more like this. I had not noticed it first, but what really drew me to this watch design is that it's an amalgam of some really iconic winks and nods to my favorite brands and watch designs, also mixed with modern design flares. There is the case and bezel shape that of course gives me those vintage Blancpain vibes, and Perrin Watches even gives acknowledgement of inspiration to the iconic Torneck Rayville project watch built by Blancpain. And we see the recessed hour markers in a cutaway ray hot that of course gives me the same Tudor Pelagos vibes. There is this deep navy blue green dial color that is so dark it almost looks black, but not quite. And I like the matching colored date wheel that allows it to hide into the dial in contrast to the hands that are stark glossy white that just jump out for easy legibility of the time. The two words to describe this watch I would choose would be contrast and texture. The case is made of marine grade stainless steel with a bead blasted texture for this matte finish and smooth feel paired with a steel bezel that is black PVD coated and has a nice coin edge along the sides that while it does not extend up to the edges of the bezel, still allows for a nice grip when turning it. The bezel is unidirectional with 120 clicks. It's rock solid with zero back play and has a really crisp bezel action feel and sound. The bezel insert is made from brushed stainless steel with a coating of titanium nitride for a muted reflective look. The watch also has a screw down crown at three o'clock that is also bead blasted, has the Perrin branding, broad coin edging, and is absent of crown guards, giving a clean look overall. Lastly, I have to give credit where due, and that is that this watch has a case back with all the typical specification details. However, there's also an if found contact Perrin watches, which I think is a great idea since each watch is serialized and can be tracked should somebody find it and reach out to the company. Overall, this watch has a really nice heft to it, weighing in right at around 83 grams, that's without any strap or bracelet attached. The case width is perfect for most wrist sizes at 39 millimeters, however, the lug to lug height comes in at just under 49 millimeters, so you may find that this wears a bit too long for those smaller wrist sizes. And this is how the watch wears on my 7 and 1 quarter inch wrist. The case thickness is 12.8 millimeters and the lug width comes in at the very popular 20 millimeter sizing for plenty of strap and bracelet swap options. Stick around to the end to see my favorite combos on this watch. Now as far as specs go, this watch has everything you'd want to see at this price range of just around $600. There's a flat sapphire crystal with three layers of AR coating applied, BGW9 Super Luminova applied to the hands and bezel, 200 meters of water resistance, and the movement used is the tried and true Swiss made Salida SW200, beating at 28,800 vibrations per hour or four hertz, and has been hand regulated with an accuracy of around plus five seconds per day, the slight beat error and healthy amplitude of around 285. 
I love a lot about this watch, but there are also just a few small things that I personally would change, such as the length of the minute hand. Since it extends out to the chapter ring, the thickness of the hand covers the minute marker completely, and I personally would have preferred to have the tip just under the minute marker or covering it only slightly. The only other issue I had was what I noticed from other reviews on this watch, showing that the bracelet version has a satin finish which does not match the case or any other aspect of this watch. So I think if Perrin watches had released a bead blasted finish bracelet, Jeff probably would have picked up that option. Instead Jeff went for the NATO strap option and then was on the hunt for a good bracelet pairing and decided on this Forstner rivet style bracelet which I think looks great. It's the stretch link version so you get the most comfortable fit as your wrist expands and shrinks throughout the day. I love the rivet design and while it too has a brushed or satin finish, because there's an absence of in links, you don't pick up on the texture difference nearly as much as the Perrin bracelet. And as promised, the watch is a strap monster so check out my pairings here now and let me know afterwards in the comments which is your favorite. They all look good in my opinion, but I'm really torn between the Artem strap and the Tropic rubber strap. Again, priced at around $600, I think this is one of those watches that is going to appeal to watch enthusiasts that want something different, something unique, but with a solid build, quality finishing, and where there are no corners cut. And this watch checks all those boxes, and I really do appreciate Jeff allowing me to spend some time with it so I could share this video with you all. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to get your opinions on this piece, so drop me a comment down below. And as always, may the Schwartz be with you, and I can't wait to see you at the next one. Take care.